Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. So on the web, what? What was wrong with that intro? Hey, you always say it's everybody. We have a catchphrase. It's good evening, everybody. I know, and I always say America, but then I said the rest of the world. But you're excluding all the aliens that listen to the show. Oh, shut it right in your pie hole. This is John. This is Curtis. We are, uh, okay, first of all, we need to, how do we, I actually I didn't even tell you. We, we need to say, okay, last week's show was a lot of fun. I am still, for, I for us. just got out of rehab <laughs> last, in time to make it to this last show. Last week's show was a lot of fun for us. I have done and, serious permanent damage to my body. And it was the longest show that we've done in quite a long time. Have we ever done a longer show? I don't believe we have. No, it was our longest show uh, ever. I'm pretty it, sure. I think it was our two, longest two show. Two and a half hours. And, and in that two and a half hours, there is a good 36 minutes of quality content. Well, I would have said 34, but... You know, yeah. but there, there were some real gems in there, so... Mm-hmm. Um, if you were listening to it and you had a hard time listening to it, we apologize. Just know that, that it was very fun for yeah. us to do. We were having a good time. We were so having a great time. Why are you, why you got to hate on us? Why you got to hate? And yeah. really, so, uh, yeah, our, our, and our, our guest, Tom Conkle and uh, Brittany Powell, they were, mm. they were awesome. That and, one was for Tom, uh, by the way. We will, we will have them back on at some point. And, I uh, still have Tom's uh, pasties right yeah, here. stuck to the window stuck right the window. there. Yeah. Wow. So. Mm, odd. So tonight we have a big, big, big night. We already have people. We have guests in the chat room and guests. Uh, if you're, well, I just, I just made a post. So I, if well, and it, let, us, let us remark now that if you're a guest in the chat room and you'd like to be able to ask questions of our guests this evening, then you should probably just sign up for a Blog Talk Radio account. It is fast, free. They don't harass you, send you spam or anything like that. But it will allow you to actually chat in our chat room instead of just view what's going on in there. So tonight's show, we have a big, big guest. Uh, we are going to be telling, talking with Nelson Ellis, who is, who plays Lafayette in uh, in the HBO series True Blood. And uh, Nelson and I met, and I asked him if we wanted to do the show, and he he agreed, and he's actually joining us, going to be joining us a little later on from uh, from location. He's in New Orleans shooting a film right now, so we'll be talking to him about that. New Orleans is still around. Uh, yeah, it's still there. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. so it, it flooded and then it, it drained. And oh, then, really? So yeah. they. They put it back. They, they, uh, not all of it. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of it, from what I understand. Okay, well, yeah, learn something new every day. Have you been wa- watching the Olympics at all? I, I have, I have, and I have a pet peeve to talk about about the Olympics. I, so do I. Uh, you first. Okay, I, I, I have hardly watched. I have watched maybe four minutes of the entire Olympic coverage. Now, part of that was, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I've been thinking about writing a seriously, uh, a strongly worded blog post. What? An actual blog post. An actual blog post, which I never ever do on our site, which do is it. worst show on the web dot com. We uh, during the opening ceremonies. Now, did you watch the opening ceremonies? I did not. Okay, there was a, a a piece that they did where they said, and now, ladies and gentlemen, the London Symphony Orchestra mm-hmm. will be playing uh, the theme Chariots of Fire. Oh, okay, Vangelis. Yeah, and one uh, of my favorite composers and, of all time. And so they'll be playing the theme from Chariots of Fire. Mm-hmm. And so they start, and the first thing that you see is a finger because that 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 piece of music starts with, yeah, and then right. the rest of it comes in, and then it's more of a then the. The, the right. camera p- pulls back to yeah. reveal that that person is Rowan Atkinson. Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. Mm-hmm. And they do a whole shtick that was a little bit long in the tooth, and he's... Breaking uh, the piano, his, his falling entire over, job getting his head is, His stuck. entire job is doing that through the entire song, and he gets bored, and then at one point he sneezes, he's looking for nap uh, tissue, uh-huh. and then at one point he's daydreaming that in there they intercut, intercut him with clips of... The, the real the movie, and it was just a little long in the tooth, like this explanation. And yeah. so, but, but here was my my fault with it. I think I'm going to go first. No, no, here was my fault with it. Immediately, right? They, they say, and here's the London Symphony Orchestra, right. playing this piece of music, mm-hmm. and almost immediately it becomes a Mr. Bean gag. Right. It's like, wow, what a way to reduce world class musicians to props. Oh, I thought they'd been props for a while. You know, I actually ever since they played with Elton John, you know, I've kind of thought of them as, as no, I, you know, I, I just found it really an sort accessory. Of, sort of, yeah, that's all it was. Yeah. It, and it's like, okay, why don't you let people play? That's your pet peeve. Well, yeah, why don't you let? Because oh, I haven't either. been watching. They, they're. I'm so done with the Olympics already. But why don't you? You know, if you're going to do that, fine. Here's the London Symphony Orchestra playing mm-hmm. a great piece of music, mm-hmm. and let us appreciate that for a few minutes. 
Let us appreciate, you know, a minute of the actual music, the 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 beautiful music, and then. So you're criticizing their timing. Just when they're, they're, it should have been much better. Okay. And then, just when we become, you know, lulled by this sense of nirvana that this music has, you know, brought on, mm-hmm. you, it's even more of a surprise that Mr. Bean is in the in the orchestra mm-hmm. doing it. And then you can do the thing, and then the, his shtick doesn't have to be so freaking long. And it mm-hmm. was just, I just thought it was. As it was, I understood what they were doing, um, but uh, yeah, I just thought the timing was poor. Other than that, I haven't watched any Olympics whatsoever. Oh, okay. Well, I and don't... by the way, that was the only portion of the opening ceremonies that I watched. Okay, so, I'm going to talk about my pet peeve yeah. now because it's, it's really driving me nuts. More than one of my uh, Facebook and friend air quotes friends uh, have have posted saying, please, please do us a favor. Those of us who work during the day, those of us who don't have the freedom to watch what we want to watch when we're going to watch it, those of us who have other things going on in our lives and have taped the Olympics, please do not talk about the Olympics on Facebook so that we don't get any spoilers. To to which I say, do you call all the radio stations that you listen to and say, don't talk about the Olympics? Do you know what I've been doing, though? Do you? I I have people that have been doing that as well, and you know what I've been doing? What? I've been been posting uh, the fake winners to fake events. Yeah. I I tell you, it pissed me out because I'm like, you know what? You 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 don't call a radio station and say don't talk about the Olympics. You just don't listen to the radio. You don't call up your television station and say don't talk about the Olympics. You don't turn on the television. So if you can't control yourself from getting onto a social media site that you know is going to have this stuff going on, no, I get it. I no, I hear you. Don't and bother it, doing and it. It wasn't the way I thought you were going to go with that. But uh, oh, God, wow. it pisses me off. So you know, it's funny because we we just started the show and we're already getting close to uh, Mr. Nelson Ellis time. And so that was like the, the quickest sort of intro. That was our we, – we might talk about the Olympics later when nobody else is listening. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, – <laughs> but Well, it, it could it, be in 10 minutes. In just a few know. minutes. Now, if you were listening to the show live, and, and we know that most people who listen to the show listen to it as a podcast. If you were listening to the show live, there are two different ways in which you will be able to uh, interact with our guests tonight. You can go to the chat room, and you can type in questions. He's not reading the chat, but we are, and so we will ask our ask the question of uh, of Mr. Ellis. Yeah. If it you passes know, muster. If it passes must, yeah, muster. Right. You know, I, it's not like, you know, what's your favorite brand of relish? Oh, got to cross that one off my list? Yeah, cross that one off the list. All right. Uh, so the other way, though. The other way is you can call in. That's right. And so a little later on, now we already have someone calling in. Oh, no, that's, no, that's, that, no, that's, that's, that's our guest. That's our guest. Curtis. Sorry. You're right. You're right. Woo. I know you're not used to us actually being on top I of know. the show. You are, you are on yeah. it already. So. so now you will be able to call in later in the show. Now, don't call in right now. We're not going to get to your, show, your, your questions right away. Um, <clears throat> but a little later on in the show, uh, we will be taking callers. Uh, our number is 347-202-0556. So we will be back in just 10 little seconds with Mr. Nelson Ellis from True Blood. Worst show on the web. We put the crap in craptastic. And I believe we have Mr. Ellis with us on the phone right now. Hello. Nelson, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us tonight. You are uh, currently, if I am not uh, mistaken, in New Orleans shooting shooting a film. I am. I'm in New Orleans shooting films for the Bucket of Sharon and Luther King Jr. actually. Now, I personally find did not understand any of that. Did you? <laughs> I know. I, we got some kind of audio issue here. Which we, is, I'm, okay, I'm, you hear me now? There we go. That's better. That's better. Okay. Yeah, I'm in I'm in New Orleans in the film called The Butler, uh, playing Martin Luther King. Um, and it's a really freaking dynamic cast of individuals. Uh yeah, Forrest Whitaker is in it, Terrence Howard, Oprah Winfrey, Leah Shriver, Robin Williams, um, Vanessa Redgrave, Jane Fonda. Wow. It's just a monster of a cast, directed by Lee Daniels. Now how does it feel going into a project with a cast such as that and you are playing uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Dude, I feel like a little boy with short legs chasing his father. I mean, my God, it's 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 like I I I I should not be here, and you know you're constantly second guessing yourself because you're working with people who are so 
dynamic in what they do. <laughs> you know, and you've not quite been around that long to make a, a name for yourself. So it's it's a little nerve wracking. Wow. I, I, I couldn't imagine going into that situation. You're like, great, I'm playing Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, wait, who else is going to be on set? Never mind. Now I'm going to stay home. Wow, that uh, it, it must be just a, a crazy, crazy experience for you. Now, how long are you going to be down there? I'll be down there for three weeks. That's great. Now, it, correct me if I'm wrong, that you actually do shoot uh, part of the True Blood uh, series is shot on location in Louisiana as well, correct? Yes. Yes, we so have much- more the first two seasons, but now we just, I think, shoot exteriors. Nice. So, well, everyone, you know, everyone knows you from uh, for your work on True Blood, and uh, quite honestly, you're a, a relative newcomer uh, to Hollywood. Like you know, you you alluded to a moment ago, uh, you had a few uh, projects that you did before True Blood, but really, you kind of came uh, very quickly from you went for you went to Juilliard, and and shortly after Juilliard, you ended up you know out in L. A. and 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 uh, working with, with Mr. Alan Ball. What was that whole process for you like? <laughs> working with him? <laughs> and just, you know, going to, you know, from school to a hit TV show in just a just a short amount of time, just a few years. You know, I wish I had a mentor at that time. I wish I had someone um, who had been on the show before and and because things happen so fast. I didn't know how to quite deal with it in the in the healthiest of ways. Because, um, you know, it happens really, real fast, and all of a sudden there's a lot of expectations and pressure and, and likes and a lot of people talking about you. And, and uh, you know, everywhere you go, you're now, you, you have no more anonymity, and that can freak a person out a little bit. So I was freaked out a little bit, um, but uh, once I learned the ropes, I got it together. So, so this is John, and I am unlike unlike Curtis. I am not as familiar with the series True Blood. I have, I, I because I'm cheap. Shame and on I don't, you! Shame on you! I'm, I got. I really <laughs> got to look at my priorities. At first, I do a show with Curtis, and, and then I don't get HBO and watch True Blood. I know, I know. But I, I was wondering if maybe for people like me and, and probably some listeners we have who are like me, if you could describe a little about your character on True Blood and exactly, uh, you know, what it, what it's like playing him. Well, um, I started off as uh, a gay, short order cook who also sold vampire blood and sold himself. He was a... Uh, a freelance sex trafficker, as I call him. Um, <laughs> and he ran a gay porn website. So he was a hustler and an entrepreneur. Um, and in his trajectory, he became a boyfriend for a year, got possessed, killed his boyfriend via the witch that possessed him. And now he's just in mourning because he's in mourning, but he's also hustling his other gifts which uh, now he's a medium. He found out that he has witch blood, so he's a medium now, and he also has a demon inside himself that occasionally comes out with power. <laughs> you know, uh, you uh, well, I just had a question, and it, and it just... I, well, I, have a, I have a great question. Um, so in, in the original series, that the, the uh, in the books that the uh, series was based on, your character uh, didn't live very long, but as it turns out in the, in the show, uh, your character was so popular and, and such an important medium for the development of some of the other characters on the show that they've continued your character past where he would have died in the original series. What's that like for you that, that you're, uh, you've are you been given kind of a stay of execution? No, it's a job. So <laughs> I was like, bless the Lord on my soul. Uh yeah, when Alan told me that he was going to keep me, I was like, thank God. Because, um, I mean, this was my second series that I worked on. I worked on one before, but it died at 13 episodes. But as an actor, you get, you know, when you have a steady paycheck, 
Um, that shit feels good. Uh, <laughs> so, what was that? Um, so yeah, I was I was I was delighted, and I had fallen in love with the rest of the cast. I loved working with Alan. Um, <clears throat> and I thought the project was wonderful, so I was glad to say that Alan decided to keep me on. Alan decided to keep me on actually before the show hit the air. So he had, he had, before there were fans, anything like that, he had already decided that he was going to keep me. Now, for those of you who don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about Mr. Alan Ball, who is the the uh, director, producer, writer of the, uh, you can see the concept. Um, he is now the executive producer of the show. Actually, just stepping down is going to be replaced. He's moving on to another show. But he's also responsible for, for bringing us such exciting shows as Six Feet Under. And uh, I forget the project that he's working on. He's about to start working on. But this it's last called Banshee. It'll be on Cinemax. And so he is uh, he is moving on from True Blood, and he's handed off the uh, the reins to uh, other uh, just as talented folk. So now, and, and from what I hear, if you can't show it on HBO, Cinemax is where. Yeah, that, obviously, he's going taking it up a notch. Yeah, obviously, there's it's going to be True Blood with more nudity. <laughs> <laughs> Let us all pray. So now, uh, some of the questions that I have for you, I, I'm really curious when you play such a uh, an an openly gay character. Uh, I'm going to go on a limb and say convincing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A convincing, convincing. portrayal of an openly what, what gay character. What kind of response have you received from not only, you know, the, the straight community, but from the gay community? Wait, he's straight? What, uh, and what, um, uh, what, what trepidation did you have about, you know, if any, about playing such a character? Um... <clears throat> As a black man in in this industry, it, it playing such a strong character can stigmatize. Oftentimes, the actor can be stigmatized. So that was my only fear. And and uh, I remember uh, going to my godmother, who was Viola Davis, and I said, "A hey, character, I don't want to get stigmatized. You you think I should do it?" And uh, she said, "You got any more offers for any jobs?" I said, "No, <laughs> better take that damn job. Don't worry about that other stuff. Pray." So, um, I had some trepidation in the beginning. Um, in terms of, it's funny because straight people, the character being gay is not even like that's not what they they just say they love the character. Like, honestly, it would shock me because I thought that people would, like, think all sorts of things. And, and I thought the gay community would hate me. I thought straight people would be like, dude, why are you playing a gay dude? Not the case. Straight people just say, oh, I love the character. They don't go, you know, gay or this or that. they just like, I love the character. The dude is just, I love the character. Most, most gay people will go, you know, They'll talk about all the different stereotypes of the gay community and how I sort of sidestep them, and um, because it's their world, so obviously they come up to me. But everybody likes the character for who he is, and being gay is, you know, such a small part of him that people just sort of like him for who he is. Um, and I don't know that recipe. Well, I don't know. Actually, I don't know why people like him yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you. <laughs> I, I cannot um, tell you how many people when I uh, when I said I, I got a chance to work with you or I was going to be interviewing you, how many people were like, "Oh, he is my I love that show. He's my favorite character." Oh, mm -hmm, I love mm -hmm. you know somebody posted on my Facebook page today. Uh, I love me some laugh laugh. You know. So you, you've definitely, you know, I, I, if you could figure out how you did it, you have definitely struck a chord uh, with the, the viewership of that show because everyone loves you. You're you're one of the favorite, you know, you, Lafayette is one of the favorite characters on that show. Bro, I've been trying to figure it out for the past four years, and I've been like, I don't, I, I I'm just gonna accept it, okay? But I don't understand why. Um, but, but, you know, I do with my family. My family hates, well, a lot of my family hates the show. But I come from a family of, like, 
Bible thumpers. Mm-hmm. You know, so they yeah. don't they don't appreciate this. Um, and what Lafayette represents to, you know, them. So I, I so you know, so I hear that all the time. So I never understand why. I, <laughs> but anyway. Now, I'm just curious, uh, when you're out and about, when you know, because really you sort of came from, even though you'd been on another series and you've had some, some film work, this was really the show that, you know, people first noticed you from. And because you're playing such a, a very strong character, when you're out in public and pe- when people recognize you, uh, do, they, do they confuse, you know, you know, can they see the difference between you and your character? Or have you had people, you know, that just assume that you are Lafayette? Um, a lot of people assume that I'm Lafayette. Because uh, they're always surprised when they meet me. Um, or they go, I heard the voice, but you don't look like La La. <laughs> I'm like, well, only because he's my nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> like he's my nine to five. I leave him at work. I don't bring him home. Um, yeah, or oh, they they expect me to resemble him in in some way, um, or walk like him, or talk like him, or have some mannerisms that he has. And, and uh, I'm like, no, no, no. And they they like I'll say, I right, my name is no sorry. And they're like Lafayette, and then they call me Lafayette. For the duration of the conversation, <laughs> they don't call me not time. And Lafayette, I'm in New Orleans and I'm Lafayette. And <laughs> That's hilarious. In New Orleans, they won't call me by my name. They just keep calling me Lafayette. That that is hilarious. Now, uh, can you tell? I mean, I know that some of the people are going to be, you know, uh, clamoring for for True Blood. Uh, information. What is uh, something that you can share that happens to to Lafayette this season, season five that's already underway? Um, he 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 regains his footing. I'll say that, and he goes back to because we've seen Lafayette like just deal with some shit for a long time for the past two seasons. Now we start to see a resemblance of the old Lafayette start to come back to life. He starts hustling again. He does start hustling again. He does. And he gets a bit, he gets lighter. Um, He's not bedraggled. He's going to start to come out of um. It's good to get back to the funny, funny. So I know we've been spending a lot of time talking about True Blood, which which is a very popular show. But I also want to know, I mean, aside from the project you've just talked about that you're currently working on and, and this current season of True Blood, what else do you have in the hopper? Are there any other things that you're working on that you want to talk about? Yes. I um, have a documentary that I'm uh, the executive producer slash director of. It's called Damn Wonderful. And um, it's about six young LGBTQ poets, three from New York, three from L.A. Um, And we basically use them, their lives, their journey um, to combat suicide among young LGBTQ individuals now because there's a spike and then there's a spike in bullying. And so we're hopefully trying to create these six role models to tell the world, to tell young LGBTQ individuals who are being bullied and who have thoughts of suicide and who aren't in a situation to where they can wait to things get better. We have these six individuals through their poetry and through their stories telling the world that who they are is relevant and special and you don't have to deal with being bullied and Love yourself and suicide is not an option and you can take control of your life. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, originally we, when we started the project, um, it, 
it, it was just supposed to be about, you know, these six poet, young poets who, who are great role models for that community or could be great role models for that community. And then we found out that, you know, one of them were correct, was corrective rape and, and mm. five of them attempted suicide and mm. all of them were bullied. So it became about this dialogue of despite what's going on, you and you alone have to live with yourself forever and you have to learn how to love yourself. And they, and they, and they talk about their journey to, to find the place within themselves to where they go, I am wonderful and I'm here for a reason and I am relevant. Despite what's going on around me, I'm going to stay true to who I am and love who I am. And I think it's a beautiful thing. So I'm, I'm really, really proud of the project. Um, I've learned a whole lot, and uh, I'm a father. I'm a five-year-old, and, and I was like, you know, all the all the things that a parent thinks about in terms of what their child is going to be when they grow up, I completely arrested all that stuff, and I said, my child is going to be him, and I'm going to love him for whatever he becomes, and it's because of this project. So now, is that is this a project that you would have done, uh, or you know, the, before you ended up doing the role, you know, of Lafayette playing an, an openly gay character? No, I would I would not have done this project before I I um, play Lafayette. Uh, an, an, H, uh, an executive at HBO um, about a year ago he told me he said no time. Um, this character you play has afforded you a voice in a specific community, and you should really do something while you're playing this character um, in terms of a good call to the community. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't know what to do. Went to a poetry slam, and suicide and bullying was a hot topic. Among young LGBTQ, I researched it, found out that it was a big issue, and and I'm just passionate about young people in general because they're our future, they're our tomorrow. So got some producers together and we decided to do damn wonderful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, oh, go ahead. Oh, do, do yeah, I have a question. Okay. I, no, I just want to ask. I, you, you talked earlier about how you're you you come from a background and an upbringing that that's not as accepting of that type of lifestyle, and now you find yourself as as a role model uh, for that lifestyle, even though it's not a lifestyle that you personally in your private life partake in. Uh, how, how do you square those two things? I mean, has this been a challenge for you in your family life, and uh, and if so, has that been a something that you can kind of pull on and draw on in both your portrayal of your character and also in projects like Damn Wonderful? Um, I mean, I look at it like this. People are people. I mean, we are many different shades, and that's why the world is so colorful. I don't think that they're much... I, I, gay is such a small part of an individual. Straight is such a small part of an individual. Um, so I, I, I deal with my family because I'm a grown man. I, I deal with them like, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't share those beliefs. So I'm not going to conform to any yes I I don't have a problem <laughs> in my life because I, I just I I yeah I don't have I don't have problems in my life well we have I, I just, we, sorry, we have some, we have some questions that are starting to come in uh, both in the chat room and I'm getting questions texted to me on my phone uh, so uh, one of the people in the chat room, uh, screen name Delayed, had a, had a great question. He said, Stephen Moyer directed last week's episode. How was the experience uh, being directed by a fellow actor? It was weird at first, I must admit. <laughs> it was weird at first. Because um, <clears throat> then you have to switch to, oh, this is not my peer now. This is the director. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's such a great director. I, I after about two or three hours, I started flowing with him. But it was weird at first. It was weird at first. 
And then uh, I have another, uh, the, the question that was uh, sent to me via my own personal phone is from listener Gina, who would like to say hello. Uh, is, has there ever been anything that, that you have been asked to do on the show that you refused to do or anything that you were asked to do that you dreaded doing? Well, you can't refuse Alan Ball. <laughs> um, the gold thong and me pulling out my pants was a bit much for me. I, I was not looking forward to pulling down my pants in the gold thong. Um, and uh, on that Monday to my at my father's job, because all my father's co-workers, our fans and stuff, went back and told my father, your son is wearing a gold thong. Michelle, and he came back and he was like, "Did they pay you extra for that?" <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I was red so phone situation. And, and what did you tell your dad? I said, "No, they don't pay me extra for what I got to do. If I actually pull out my slong, I would have to do that too." He would go, oh, "Okay." <laughs> That's, that's, that's hilarious. That's uh, well, you know, it, it's funny uh, for me because in in my outside of acting world, a lot of the people that I that I interact with uh, professionally are also fans of the show, and so just the fact that I, I'm I am going to be on the show in a couple weeks uh, with you just has blown people away. I can only imagine what friends of your family members must be. Oh yeah, oh yeah, my son. That that's my son. I, I can only imagine what kind of um, uh, of joy that must bring to them. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I missed that. I no, that's okay. That's okay. It was really Somebody more of a statement. It was really more of a statement talking. than a question. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so okay. I, I have. Uh, I was just curious. You know, you. Well, I was curious what the audition process was like uh, getting getting this role. When you first read the part, you know how different was Lafayette in your mind from what he eventually turned out to be, and you know, and how different. Uh, what, what was your take going into the the role as a, as opposed to now that you're playing the role, you know, every week? What you know how you how you play him. Well, I didn't know. I mean, Alan Ball, I mean, it was just so eclectic, the stuff that was in the description of what he wanted. I, I didn't. I thought he was insane because I was like, how are you going to put all this together? You want somebody feminine and masculine and he wearing makeup and he, he, I, and, and he, he has to beep. I, I mean, it was just a lot of contradictory elements about the character in my mind. Um, and I, so I didn't know how to do what's going on. He didn't want you to come in with make because I was like, you know, make make it would be an important part. He, and then they would call him a drag queen, so it was like, I don't know what the fuck they want. I don't understand what's going on. Drag queen, not, and then Alan didn't want you to bring in a caricature, so I was like, this some this some shit right here. Uh, I have four auditions. Um, my third audition was terrible, apparently. Uh, and and I just got the fourth one by the skin of my teeth, and that's only because Alan brought everybody back. He was like, it was like six of us auditioning three times together. He didn't know which one he wanted. Um, I went to my acting coach. Um, her name is Marjorie Ballantyne, and she was like, "No, son, you got to find like." You have to find the femininity inside yourself and wrap that in the masculinity and, and just, like, build the character from elements that are inside of you. And I was like... And, you know, and I'm harking back to my mother. My mother was a tomboy. But I can, like, act like my mother and put on my mother. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was like... uh I I I got some femininity inside me that I can work with, um, that I can offset that with some masculinity. Okay, I can I can I can do them both. Um, and then she was like, "Now let's build a person." Because Alan Ball is a gay man. If 
if you come in with a caricature, he's going to smell you before you walk in the room. You have to come in with a person. So I was like, you know, I put a scarf on my head. You know, I, I got to walk together. I, I figured out who I thought Lafayette was in an audition situation because you don't, like, fully flesh out a character in the audition because you don't have enough time. Um, and then in the fourth audition, I went in and he gave me the job the next day. Hmm. Hmm, that's awesome. My take on Lafayette was I was like, the dude should be, like, wild and completely unpredictable. So I did some in the audition that I normally wouldn't do. Like, I got up, walked around, I put my crotch, and I, I like, poked my crutch out into Alan's face. I was like, I'm just go for broke. Have you talked to him since then? Was there anything, I mean, was that the, you know, was, what was the deal breaker? Or not the deal breaker. What, what, what cinched your, uh, uh, you getting the job? Um, cause I think that I brought something in that he hasn't seen in the other, the other five people. I think that, um, there was something he didn't see. And I think that I was unpredictable. Um, I mean, I can only tell you what the casting director told me. I think the, un- the unpredictability, uh, and there was something that Alan Ball hasn't seen. So in in that you brought something to the character that, that they maybe hadn't seen before, D- do you find yourself now, you're into the, the fifth season of the show, is it, how much input do you have into the character and, and what goes on? Is this all predetermined for you or is there, do you participate in any of the uh, actual creation of this character? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Alan Ball is a big collaborator. Collaborator. So, uh, yeah, everything from hair and makeup to costume, you have a voice in it. And because you're, you're the, you're the mind of the character. You know what I mean? You can't, these other elements aren't. So if you're the mind of the character, then they can't just like say you don't look like this. You're gonna wait here. You know I mean? So, so we uh, um, we collaborate. Like I can say, I think he he'll wear this. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Audrey is spot on all the time. Like, the, Audrey, the costume, our costume person, she's spot on all the time. At this point, well, I mean, at this point, pretty much everybody know all the characters. So we we don't do that much collaborating now because we're in a rhythm to everybody. Everybody sort of just know the character and how they look and how they dress. I okay. in, in terms of your in terms of the input that you do have on the character, have you ever had a situation where the writers presented you with the scene and and you just said, "No, nah, Lafayette wouldn't do that." And what happens when yeah. that happens? <laughs> we talked about it, and then I end up doing what I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, well, the burden is uh, then you have to come up with something, or you have to come up with something that works for them, too. And um, so there was one time I felt strongly, um, like when when – when Marnie kills Jesus and she uses my body to do it, like I was strongly against it. I was like, I would, I would like, I would come forth and stop her. I would not allow my body to kill my dude. I, I would, I would not. Lafayette is a strong person. I, and uh, they was like, no, 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 Marnie is stronger, and we really have to set up that she is, like, all-powerful right now, and and Lafayette is strong. But if you can, if you could, like, try to do it a couple of takes, yeah. But the way the shot was set up, it, I could not make it work. So we, we perished that thought, and Marnie just killed my dude. <laughs> so uh, uh, I was curious if there was something. Uh, it, what was of all the things that you've done, the, the five seasons that you've had? Uh, is there an episode that stands out as your your most and least favorite? I guess are there episodes that stand out as your most and least favorite? 
Yeah, my, I don't have a least favorite. I have my most favorite. The A's Burger episode is probably my all-time favorite episode. So uh, talking um, to two people that, that don't really follow the show, what was so... Uh, and, and we know we're bad for it. Yeah, we know we're bad for it. But what was... Uh, please give us a little uh, rundown on why that was your favorite to do. Well, it was, it's probably my favorite episode because that season I, I had the most to do that episode. <laughs> Um, and I and I normally only had like two two scenes, and I have four scenes that episode. But you know, there was a scene to where these rednecks had come in, and um, they sent their burger back because uh, they said that they did they they wanted a burger with no age because I had made the burger, and so I proceed to come out there and I whooped their ass. <laughs> oh, so yeah. now we don't know if we're going to get any callers uh, we've had a very, very quiet chat room tonight but if you would like to ask some questions we are going to open up the, uh, the, the our call lines if you want to call in right now the number is 347-202-0556 now that being said uh, don't be surprised if, if people do not call in because our, our show the majority, our, our listeners are timid. Our, our listeners are timid, but actually our listeners are more in a, a podcast. Uh, very few people listen to us oh, live. Oh, you think that's what it is? Yeah, I think okay. that's what it is. And we know the numbers. We get good numbers every week. It's just, yeah, uh, you know, they right. listen. Uh, they, they listen. I just live. like to think they're all afraid of us. Yeah. <laughs> Or they just don't want to lend any credibility to uh, to, to what we're doing to, here. To, to what we're doing here. Now, uh, I, I had some more questions for you. Now, what is the weirdest? You now, you've got Uber fans for the show. What is the the weirdest story that you have about you know uh, out, when you out in public uh, about, from fans of the show? Is there anything that pops out at you? Yeah, my man tattoo Lafayette on his leg. No way. Yeah, he tattooed Lafayette on his leg and showed me. Um, well, so there's a guy out there walking around with that. your picture as Lafayette on his leg. Yes, sir. He lives in San Diego. <laughs> he has <laughs> Lafayette on, the show. On, his, on his calf. Um, wow. Was it a good likeness? It was. The dude is actually. I mean. I mean. I, he, he's like a, you know, a really, really pale dude, and he got a black man. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm shaded in as dark with like lipstick. No, it was, it was the, the tattoo artist was good. Um, but um, I have the privilege of being on his calf, and I'm right next to Lionel from Thundercats. That is hilarious. That's pretty awesome. On his calf. That is hilarious. Uh, I, I have what is probably... I wonder a, how Lionel feels about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, being that you're you're on the show, you get to go to a bunch of... Uh, oh, you know, we have... Um, yeah, we have... We, we You get to go to a bunch of things, you know, like Comic-Con and that type of stuff. I mean, are you just completely swamped by people? Yeah. Yeah, we, we all are. We, we so, all are. But that, that's, that's the time that we go to to uh, appreciate the fans, so it's it's all good. So uh, we, we have some people calling in. Uh, we're just going to say, you know, um, well, we're just going to, 323, you are on the air with Mr. Nelson Ellis. Hi, uh, my name is Kay. I live in Los Angeles, and I, I've been listening to the pod, and I have to say that I am a huge fan of Nelson, and I, I love Lafayette. But um, he had mentioned a, a documentary he was working on, and I just wanted to know, and he said it was about poets, and I wanted to know uh, more about the documentary, uh, like how maybe he found the poets to be in the documentary or where and the poets it, are from. And when it's going to come out. Yeah, and when it's coming out, for sure. Um, well, we're going to shop it around to festivals first. Uh Hopefully we'll get into Sundance, and then it'll. Hopefully it'll probably live at HBO. Um, considering everybody who work on the project work at HBO. Hmm. Um, but it's about we. It's about six poets who are young LGBTQ individuals, and they basically talk about their journey in dealing with suicide. Um, 
rate, um, transitioning from one gender to the next, um, and being bullied, and how they come out on the other end loving themselves regardless. Um, I mean, we have one one person who come from a Catholic home, who's a minority, and she literally went in the bathroom and said, I wanted to off myself that day because I don't know anybody around me that loves me for who I believe I am. Um, so we basically have these young people through their poetry and through their stories telling the world that they've had to deal with some hardships, but they still love themselves and they still believe themselves to be relevant. And they're telling other young LGBTQ individuals, you should too. And for those of you who don't have enough strength to wait to things get better, then you have enough strength inside yourself to make your situation better. Um, I, I found three of the poets in New York because two of them inspired me to do the project. Uh, one of them was on Brave New Voices at HBO. That's how I got her. And the other producers found the other three from L.A. Nice. And uh, what, uh, once again, what is the, the name of the, the project? It's called Damn Wonderful. Damn Wonderful. And is there any type of web uh, web presence of the documentary at this point? Absolutely. Our Tumblr is IamDamnWonderful.tumblr.com. And our Facebook is I Am Damn Wonderful. Our Twitter is I Am Damn Wonderful. In fact, you can Google I Am Damn Wonderful and all everything will come up. Wonderful. Well, we have. Uh, well, we and just, we'll also be posting all that on yeah, the worst we'll, show on the web. We'll post all that website. on our website, the worst show on the web dot com. Uh, we had two questions. One just dropped away. Thanks, Kay, for that. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to eight oh five. Eight oh five. You are on the air. Hello, uh, my name is Bree, and I just wanted to say I'm a huge fan. And I had a question about the sexual scenes that you do. Is it uncomfortable for you? knowing that your family is going to see them or that is it uncomfortable at all? <laughs> um, it was at first because, you know, you kiss the man on TV. You're like, everybody going to see this. My mama <laughs> going to see this. My daddy going to see this. My kid is going to see this. <laughs> um, but then it's my job. So, uh, you know, it's my job. Do it. So I, I uh, me and me and Kevin was at comfortable probably at first because his whole situation was because you know his wife is going to see this, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> and you know that was his first on screen kiss with a dude, <laughs> um, <laughs> and we some big old musty man. I'm like we both just some big musty man with cigarette breath. Cigarette and coffee <laughs> breath, and we lock and lift like that shit is supposed. Well, to now, I'll never be able to watch that scene again. Now, was there? I mean, how? What <laughs> was? What was the it. level of 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 nervousness going into you know that day uh, when you know that your first you know uh, on screen male kiss is happening? It was a lot. I mean, it was clearly a lot of anxiety. I mean, you can see it from a mile away. We 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 were nervous. We were really, really nervous because, um, yeah. yeah. After that, like, after that, it was like butter. I'm like, dude, you smoking. You got the kids. Stop fucking smoking. <laughs> I want to taste that. It's like carrying around Altoids. And I'm like, I, I, I'll take some gum. I don't want to eat these Cheetos right now. Me and my man Kevin about to lock lips. Let's. Yeah, after that we we were so I mean we became good friends so we were so comfortable around each other it it was like it was like it's all good. So now what what kind of reaction I mean it, it, there has to be a certain amount of razzing that you get from your friends. Um, well all my chick friends they 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 was like, Woo! I mean they loved Kevin. <laughs> They was like, that was a wonderful situation. That's a beautiful man. My new <laughs> friends were just like my brothers my brothers my brothers were a little like you know dude, that that's, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh my friends are you know, they're liberal minded person. You know, they're liberal minded people so they don't they don't really 
Yeah. So now uh, we do. We are going to have uh, time for a few more calls. If you want to uh, ask uh, Nelson a question, is number the number is three four seven two zero two zero five five six. Now uh, I'm curious. You know, you said you have you have children, uh, or at least a, a one son who's five, as do I. And and I'm there are certain things that I as an actor you know play. Hey, you know here watch Dad on TV. But there are are many things that I won't show them. Uh, have you thought about? But you're going to let them watch you on True Blood, right? Oh, oh absolutely. You're going to get to see that episode. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, no, are there? Uh, you know, have you had much thought about at what point you're going to expose them to to the bo- the you know the the body of your work? <laughs> He's already exposed to it. That little bastard. <laughs> that sounds like every five year old well, I ever knew. Well played. <laughs> he likes no, he'll 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 go because he's very technology savvy already. Like my man will break my phone. He I don't know what he does, but he just knows technology. So he so he knows that he's not supposed to be watching daddy on this show. My man knows when it comes on, he know, and he'll. I'll just come in the living room, and he's watching the show. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> you're not supposed to be watching this. I want to yeah. see daddy. <laughs> and then that, he, he's like, and then hilarious. he'll be like, uh, daddy, makeup. I was like, that's why I told you not supposed to be watching it because I'm going to explain <laughs> that to you that daddy looks like mama. I don't know. I'm going to explain that to you, don't. Yeah, he's already exposed to it. I, 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 uh, mm-hmm. in the chat room, uh, yeah. one of the people, I'm not one of the people, sorry, this crazy lady is, <laughs> drunk and crazy uh, in, lady is like harassing me. <laughs> in, in the chat room, one of the people is, that, that are in there is commenting that one of the, the qualities of Lafayette that make him really appeal to people is the attitude that he just doesn't care what people think, you know, of him. Uh, how much of that is is the character, and how much of that is you as an actor? Oh, that's I. When Alan Ball wanted this character to exist in a small town in Louisiana. Having come from a small town in Alabama and having family in New Orleans, Mississippi, um, I was like, this character cannot exist in a small southern town unless, one, he's very strong, and two, he don't give a flying F what anybody thinks. He's going to be himself regardless. Because these type of people just do not exist in a small town unless they are resilient, strong and they have a whole lot of confidence in who they are and don't care what you think. And I told him that. I was like, you know this character not he gotta he gotta just he gotta just not care what people think. Because these people are chased out of town. They're they they're like bullied relentlessly and, and jumped on and 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 it it's it, 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 it's a uh, yeah, it's a cool, cool world in small towns in the south to be to be what? certain things. Yeah, he, he, I, I would like to. Uh, we're going to wrap this up because I know it's getting late, really, where you are. And uh, but I, I would just like to uh, tell you one of my first uh, observations, I guess, uh, on you. Uh, and I'm I'm curious what your what your thoughts are on this. When you and I had uh, I had the, the pleasure of working with you on episode on an episode that that hasn't aired yet. And in the episode, uh, I I go into Merlot's, the restaurant in the store, to uh, to do no do, do no good, and and you get the drop on me with a shotgun, and um, uh, you take my gun away, and and the scene goes downhill for my character from there. Uh, you didn't really. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to word this and not sound like it's an insult, which it isn't at all. Uh, I, I felt that when you first came to set, when you and I first met, you were a little standoffish. And um, 
uh, you know, you 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 stayed in your place, which is fine. I you know I totally respect other actors' places. And then at one point, you asked me, "Do you mind if I touch you with the gun?" And and I said, "You know, do whatever you need to do, and and you know my character will do whatever he needs to do." And I think the moment that that we connected, sort of actor to actor. You at that point, at least it seemed to me um, that you were 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 much more open and much more. Uh, um, I don't want to say friendly because once again, it doesn't. I'm not. This isn't negative at all to me. Um, but I, I sort of really respected that. That you, you know, my my takeaway from that is that he wanted to connect, you know, actor to actor first before we do any socializing. Yeah, it's it's. Actors are tricky. <laughs> Actors are tricky because you, I found that um, it, because you don't know people's process, you don't know how they work, you don't know if they don't want you to deal with them when they show up, you don't know, you don't know if, if they're met, because you don't, because we never know, or I never know, especially when it's, when it's, uh, when it's actors who are brought in for two or three episodes or guest leads, and I'm really, really tricky in terms of how I deal with them because, because actors' processes are all different, and some of them don't like to be talked to. <laughs> like, they'll come to set, and you, like, talk to them, and they're like, I'm just trying to focus. I'm just really trying. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to just stand on over I'm going to sit over here. Um, or they're overly targeted, or they're method, or there's something else. So I, I just, I'm cautious with, with, with new people so that I can fill out what their process is and what they, and then I try to be respectful so then, you know, we could, you know, do this thing together and then we can both um, do what we need to do in terms of how we work. But yeah, I been on the show for a couple of years and dealing with a whole lot of people, you find out let me just figure out how they work first. Um, because I've gotten the tongue by some people, like, been told to, like, like or you have actors that tell you what to do. Like, they'll come and say, I need you to do this, do this, do this. That'll make me comfortable. If you don't do this, you do this, you do this. Um, that'll make me, and don't touch me, don't do this, don't this, don't do this. And, this is, and he's like, okay. <laughs> they just talk to you from five feet away. Just say my lines from five feet away. We can do that. that, that um, yeah. You guys are speaking of a yeah. world that I know nothing of. I mean, from all the actors, and I put actors in air quotes that I know, um, it, they should be so gracious and, and lucky to have any work at all. I can't imagine anyone being demanding. Oh, it, I, and, yeah. and, and you know, I, I, you've told me your stories, but it's just, it's unbelievable. Every time I hear this, I just go, what? Really? I mean, you guys are being paid to do what you love. Have have a little know, courtesy and, and work with the team, you know? You're going into know. someone else's house and telling them how to clean it. Yeah, know? oh, man, I would shove that Girl, gun. You have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, hopefully, um, I never will. No, I mean, people uh, people are happy to have jobs. It's just that people work the way they work. You know what I mean? They work. Like, for example, I'm working with Daniels right now, and I'm like, oh, he works the way he works. I'm in a team with Yaya and David Oyelowo, and, you know, we work. We all sort of work differently. David and I don't because we're from similar educational backgrounds, but Yaya works a certain way. Um, and some of the other actors work a certain way, and you have to sort of like find out how to make the thing happen with seven people who all sort of work differently. And a the director, they got a different approach to it. Um, when, I mean, people can be grateful to have a job, they're still going to come into it and sort of work the way they work because that's what they think. That's how they think they're like making their money. I'm making my money by doing a good job and everybody have a different approach on how they do it. Because I don't knock anybody when they come in and be demanding. I'm just like, okay, you do your process. Whatever your process is. As long as you don't step on my feet, I'm good. You can do your yeah. process. I'll respect it. And that was my, my take on it. it was like, okay, that's his process. He doesn't like to talk too much. And then, but it, for me, you know, it was, I, I felt, and I could have been totally off base, 
but once you sort of you know we connected uh, you know actor to actor then uh you know you were you were much more open and i think that's probably when you sized up what my process was yeah yeah, yeah it did and i'm kind of a shy dude dude too dude i my icebreaker for a lot of degrees you got any kids so that's the only way i can relate to a lot of people sometimes i start with mm-hmm. family first and i'm southern so you know but but Um. Yeah, but I'm sorry, I was standoffish. Yeah, no, you weren't standoffish. <laughs> That's not. We've managed to insult our guests. I know that is not the takeaway you that I wanted. Son to. of a bitch. Yeah, I, that is not what I wanted you to leave with. You were not standoffish. And he was. And by the way, he was so gracious, not saying what what, what we were all thinking was an actor who's in a bit part. Oh, who's on the screen? Me. Who's okay. on the screen for all of five minutes? I'm gonna kill. Wow! Well, how long have you been on that show? <laughs> oh, I, I I don't do this whole thing. This is beyond me. I do not have the patience for what you guys do. No, I, I was not talking that you were standoffish. It was just a, I I found it really um, interesting and not in a bad way that that you know you wanted to connect first you know as as professional actors before. <laughs> it's turned from a question to an apology. I know. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, I want to. We, we haven't had anyone else call in. Let me check the. Uh, no, no, we're, we're good. good. So I, I want to thank you for uh, for, thank you so for much. coming on the show tonight. It was a pleasure working with you on the show. It was a pleasure tonight asking you a bunch of questions. Ditto, sir. This is the longest interview I have ever had in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I mean, we 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 have the opportunity to really talk to people and you know yeah. see what. Uh, you know, this isn't just like we, a... We also generally think they're never going to come back, so we try and get it all in in one shot. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> that was sound like Chelsea lately. <laughs> wow. wow, that's the first time. Yeah, that's the uh, yeah. first comparison. How hmm. dare you, sir? <laughs> well, I well, mean, uh, she, she cracks jokes at herself and her show. And when, I, when, I, when I learned the show was called The Worst Show on the Web, I was like, <laughs> Wow. You, 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 well, you, you aim set, low. You set the bar low. Yeah. It's always easy to achieve. Right. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. <laughs> Words to live by. Well, thank you very much, uh, Nelson Ellis, and uh, and we look forward to seeing uh, the rest of the season and uh, and everything else. And our guests are thanking you and, in the and, chat room. And our guests yeah. in the chat room are thanking you as well. So, thank you. Oh, it was a pleasure being on the show, dude. And I love working with you, by the way. Thank you. I I, I will. We uh, had fun. Uh, we did. We had a lot of fun, and I would love to come back. Oh uh, God, he won't stop they, they talking about it. <laughs> Luckily, they didn't kill me, so I'm now just a resident redneck, and hopefully, they'll bring me back at some point. Oh, well, they will. So, you made quite an impression with your comic timing. So what? Uh, Why? Well, thank you. Uh, it was, uh, oh it was great! He's gonna. Fun. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I like this interview right up until then. I'll be talking about it now for a while. Oh, so. Crap. Well, thank you so much, and uh, and we look forward to seeing you in. Uh, oh, I forgot the name of the movie you're working on right now. The Butler. It's called The Butler. Yeah. The Butler. And any idea when that's coming out? I do not. Well, I it's got a, it's, it's, it's got a big enough cast. I'm sure we'll yeah, hear I'm about. Sure it. we'll hear about the Butler. <laughs> and of course, damn wonderful too. And we'll have all those links up on the worst show on the web dot com for you to to peruse. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. All right, sir. All right, goodbye. Well, there you go. We need some applause for that. You know what? I'm, I'm so, I'm so. I, you can't tell our audience what to do. Well, one of the, one of the things that I love about him is that. In, and, and this if you might turn just, this into when you worked with him again, no, I swear no. to God, I'll throw the specs box this, at your face. This might just be, you know, that he's from the south, you know, but yeah. he says he calls people sir. So often, yeah, you know, it's just a you know a, a sign of respect, and uh, I don't think it's anything. Dude, I just think he's an all around nice guy. He is. He's a total all around mm-hmm. nice guy. So uh, we want to quit being so thank southist. You. So, so, <laughs> no, that wasn't a, a negative comment about the south. Typing people. In that the was south. a positive thing. I'm saying people in the south, south are positive stereotypes. Are... Doesn't make it not a stereotype. I call people sir. I am completely lost I'm from, here. I'm from the L.A. I call he, people sir. He is so much more uh, <laughs> respectful. He's much you. more anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could just end it there. Yeah. 
<laughs> what a guy. What a great guy. What a great what interview. A, a, a great and, guy. And, uh, oh, you know, I'm, what exciting projects. My my phone is still going off, so I don't know yeah. if... Uh, we have a bunch of questions that we didn't ask. We have a nice, bunch of nice questions. Going. Yeah, I, I, have, I actually had a whole bunch of questions that we didn't ask. Uh, but, you know, we have actually blown our, our, our time, a lot of time slot here. I mean, that was... Uh, once again, we've completely filled up a show with entertaining content. What the hell? I don't know. We're going to have to change the name of the show. We're going to have to do, like, not as bad as the worst <laughs> show on the web. Right. The show. mediocrest show <laughs> on the web. Uh, so, wow. So, let's, uh, uh, so we want to thank him once again. And, and By the way, I want to say that uh, as soon as he hung up, like, 18 people left the chat room. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. Now, we would like you to, to uh, do us a favor if you could go to our Facebook page, mm-hmm. because he's not going to be the, 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 the last high-level guest we get in. He will not be. If you would like to find I, out, I how dare you, sir? We'd be hard pressed to find someone as classy as an all-around class. I know, but we can get some people almost as classy. As, yeah. Okay. I don't know who, but we can yeah. get them. I can't think of any. Uh, if you go to our Facebook page and like it, uh, so it's uh, Facebook dot com slash the worst show. I almost screwed that up. <laughs> slash you know, the yeah. What was that? <laughs> Facebook.com slash this. the worst show on the web and you'll get our page. Uh like it and then we don't spam you. We just no we you, you get updates things, of when who updates, our next guest is are, yeah. and where where we're gonna be and if we're gonna be doing anything live in the LA area or other places. You can also go to our website, www.worstshowontheweb. We not only have our show information there, but we have uh, movie reviews. Uh, Harry is a vociferous movie watcher. Did I use that word right? No. I think so. I think I did. Yeah, vociferous? I think I did. I don't think he Look used that word right. Look it up. Look it up. And uh, so he he and we also have another... Prolific is more of the word I would You know, uh, we also have another movie movie reviewer. And so the, you know... Vehement. 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 Vehement is how I pronounce it. Vehement. Don't and, you knock my accent. Oh, jeez. And so go to the website. There's all kinds of comments. John posts blogs pretty regularly. I have a blog on there that I never update. But when I do, you know, it's a doozy. And I might write something about the Olympics. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm really pissed off if at the... If it's anything like what you talked about tonight, don't bother. Well, no, it's like the Olympics as a whole, they just have a taste in, a bad taste in my mouth because... Curtis is Mr. Bean blog. Uh, shut up. Okay, so I have some things to say about the Olympics, but I may put them in a blog post. I don't know. But go to our website, www.worstshowontheweb.com. Oh, oh, we should do our Olympic update and tell all the scores because people are actually, by the time they listen to the show on the podcast, NBC still won't have shown them. Uh, Latvia has won the Golden Spelunking. And, yes. And... Uh, <laughs> Did you just say he has as if Latvia is a person? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Latvia. I thought you said Lafayette. Oh, no. I thought, wow, what an off-color joke to make. Oh, no. That was, that was really bad. Oh, my gosh. You should have chosen bad. a different country from Latvia. Wow. That was so... It shows you where my mind is. Unbelievably bad. <laughs> and if you did not get that, you were a better person yes, for it. Yeah, a much better... Well, if you're listening to this show... You're a much better person than we are. Uh, uh, and in the chat room, somebody's saying NBC sucks donkey dot dot dot. I wonder what we you have can no imagine. proof of that, but that's what they're yeah. saying in our allegedly, blog, in our chat. Allegedly, uh, NBC was photographed uh, choking <laughs> down a giant donkey <laughs> dot dot dot. Um, allegedly, we're not saying that, that we haven't seen the proof. If we get the proof, though, <laughs> we will post it on our. Yeah, website. we'll be time delayed. Yeah, we'll, if we get the proof. We'll tell you about it in two weeks, and we'll we'll post it on our website, and then the we'll worst be, show on the web will be taken off. All right, sued into oblivion. So good night, everybody, from us. I'm calling to you. It. It's been it's been a good show. It has been a good show, and we're still gonna end it with that horrible music. This is the best music ever, and don't you dare criticize it. Uh, we're just we gotta talk long enough to get the drum solo, and then we can. Because you know everybody. everybody loves the drum. Who doesn't love the drum solo? If you don't love the drum solo, say so right now in the chat room. Oh okay. yeah, that's wow. good stuff. Good night, everybody. Good night. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.
it's a little nerve wracking. It's, it's, it's a wow. Little now, I, I, I couldn't imagine going into that situation. You're like, great, I'm playing Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, wait, who else is going to be on set? Never mind. Now I'm going to stay home. Wow, that uh, it, it must be just a, a crazy, crazy experience for you. Now, how long are you going to be down there? I'll be down there for three weeks. That's great. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, that you actually do shoot uh, part of the True Blood uh, series is shot on location in Louisiana as well, correct? Yes. Yes, we so have much- more the first two seasons, but now we just, I think, shoot exteriors. Nice. So, well, everyone, you know, everyone knows you from uh, for your work on True Blood, and uh, quite honestly, you're a, a relative newcomer uh, to Hollywood. Like you know, you you uh, alluded to a moment ago, uh, you had a few uh, projects that you did before True Blood, but really, you kind of came uh, very quickly from you went for you went to Juilliard, and and shortly after Juilliard, you ended up you know out in L. A. and 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 uh, working with, with Mr. Alan Ball. What was that whole process for you like? <laughs> working with him? <laughs> and just, you know, going to, you know, from school to a hit TV show in just a just a short amount of time, just a few years. You know, I wish I had a mentor at that time. I wish I had someone um, who had been on the show before and and because things happen so fast. I didn't know how to quite deal with it in the in the healthiest of ways. Because, um, you know, it happens really, real fast, and all of a sudden there's a lot of expectations and pressure and, and lights and a lot of people talking about you. And, and uh, you know, everywhere you go, you're now, you're having more anonymity and that can freak a person out a little bit. So I was freaked out a little bit, um, but uh, once I learned the ropes, I got it together. So, so this is John, and I am unlike unlike Curtis. I am not as familiar with the series True Blood. I have, I, I because I'm Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. So on the web, what? What was wrong with that intro? Hey, you always say it's everybody. We have a catchphrase. It's good evening, everybody. I know, and I always say America, but then I said the rest of the world. But you're excluding all the aliens that listen to the show. Oh, shut it right in your pie hole. This is John. This is Curtis. We are uh, okay. First of all, we need to. How do we? I actually I didn't even tell you. We we need to say okay. Last week's show was a lot of fun. I am still for, I, for us. Just got out of rehab <laughs> in last, time to make it to this show. Last week's show was a lot of fun for us. I have done and, serious permanent damage to my body. And it was the longest show that we've done in quite a long time. Have we ever done a longer show? I don't believe we have. No, it was our longest show uh, ever. I'm pretty it, sure. I think it was our two, longest two show. Two and a half hours. And, and in that two and a half hours, there is a good 36 minutes of quality content. Well, I would have said 34, but... You know, yeah. but there's, there were some real gems in there. So, mm-hmm. um... If you, if you were listening to it and you had a hard time listening to it, we apologize. Just know that that it was very fun for yeah. us to do. We were having a good time. We were so having a great time. Why are you, why you got to hate on us? Why you got to hate? And yeah. really, so uh, yeah, our our and our, our guest Tom Conkle and uh, Brittany Powell, they were mm. they were awesome. That and, one was uh, for Tom, by the way. We will we will have them back on at some point. And I uh, still have Tom's uh, pasties right yeah, here, stuck to the window, stuck right the there. Window. Yeah. Wow. So mm, odd. So tonight we have a big, big, big night. We already have people. We have guests in the chat room and guests. Uh, if you're, well, I just, I just made a post. So I, if well, and it, let us let us remark now that if you're a guest in the chat room and you'd like to be able to ask questions of our guests this evening, then you should probably just sign up for a Blog Talk Radio account. It is fast, free. They don't harass you, send you spam or anything like that. But it will allow you to actually chat in our chat room instead of just view what's going on in there. So tonight's show, we have a big, big guest. Uh, we are going to be telling, talking with Nelson Ellis, who who plays Lafayette in uh, in the HBO series True Blood. And uh, Nelson and I met, and I asked him if we wanted to do the show, and he he agreed, and he's actually joining us, going to be joining us a little later on from uh, from location. He's in New Orleans shooting a film right now, so we'll be talking to him about that. New Orleans is still around. Uh, yeah, it's still there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. It, it flooded and then it, it drained. And oh, then, really? So yeah. they. 
They put it back. They, they, uh, not all of it. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of it. When they're, they're, it should have been much better. Okay. And then, just when we become, you know, lulled by this sense of nirvana that this music has, you know, brought on, mm-hmm. you, it's even more of a surprise that Mr. Bean is in the in the orchestra. Mm-hmm. Doing it. And then you can do the thing, and then the, his shtick doesn't have to be so freaking long. And it mm-hmm. was just, I just thought it was, as it was, I understood what they were doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just thought the timing was poor. Other than that, I haven't watched any Olympics whatsoever. Oh, okay. Well. And, and by the way, that was the only portion of the opening ceremonies that I watched. So okay, I'm going to talk about my pet peeve yeah. now because it's, it's really driving me nuts. More than one of my uh, Facebook and friend, air quotes, friends, uh, have have posted saying, please, please do us a favor. Those of us who work during the day, those of us who don't have the freedom to watch what we want to watch when we're going to watch it, those of us who have other things going on in our lives and have taped the Olympics, please do not talk about the Olympics on Facebook so that we don't get any spoilers. Do, to which I say, do you call all the radio stations that you listen to and say, don't talk about the Olympics. But do you know what I've been doing, though? Do you? Because I, I have people that have been doing that as well. And you know what I've been doing? What? I've been, fa- I've been posting uh, the fake winners to fake events. Yeah. I, I tell you, it pissed me off because I'm like, you know what? You, you, you don't call a radio station and say, don't talk about the Olympics. You just don't listen to the radio. You don't call up your television station and say, don't talk about the Olympics. You don't turn on the television. So if you can't control yourself from getting onto a social media site that you know is going to have this stuff going on, no, I get it. I no, I hear you. Don't and bother it, doing and it. It wasn't the way I thought you were going to go with that, but oh, uh, God, wow. it pisses me off. So you know, it's funny because we we just started the show and we're already getting close to uh, Mr. Nelson Ellis time, and so that was like the, the quickest sort of intro. That was our. We, we might talk about the Olympics later when nobody else is listening. Uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but well, it, it could be in ten minutes. In just a few minutes. Now, if you were listening to the show live, and and we know that most people who listen to the show listen to it as a podcast. If you were listening to the show live, there are two different ways in which you will be able to uh, interact with our guest tonight. You can go to the chat room, and you can type in questions. He's not reading the chat, but we are. And so we will ask our ask the question of uh, of Mr. Ellis. <laughs> yeah. if it you know, passes muster. If it passes must, yeah, muster, right. you know, I, it's not like you know. What's your favorite brand of relish? Oh, gotta cross that one off my list. Yeah, cross that one off your list. All right. Uh, so the other way, though, the other way is you can call in. That's right. And so a little later on, now we already have someone calling in. Oh no, that's no, that's, that, no, guess. No, that's, that's, that's our guest. That's our guest. Curtis. Sorry, you're right. You're right. Woo. I know you're not used to us actually being on top I of know. the show. You are. You are on yeah. it already. So. so now you will be able to call in later in the show. Now don't call in right now. We're not going to get to your show, your your questions right away. Um, <clears throat> but a little later on in the show, uh, we will be taking callers. Uh, our number is three four seven two zero two zero five five six. So we will be back in just ten little seconds with Mr. Nelson Ellis from True Blood. Worst show on the web. We put the crap in craptastic. And I believe we have Mr. Ellis with us on the phone right now. Hello. Nelson, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us tonight. You are uh, currently, if I am not uh, mistaken, in New Orleans shooting shooting a film. I am. I'm in New Orleans shooting films for the Buffalo Show. I'm playing Martin Luther King Jr. Actually. Now, I personally find did not understand any of that. Did you? <laughs> I know. I, we got some kind of audio issue here. Which we. Is, okay, I'm, I'm, you hear me now? There we go. That's better. That's better. Okay. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in New Orleans in the film called The Butler, uh, playing Martin Luther King. Um, and it's a really freaking dynamic cast. It's, Individuals. Uh, you have Forrest Whitaker, who's in it, Terrence Howard, Oprah Winfrey, Leah Shriver, Robin Williams, um, Vanessa Redgrave, Jane Fonda. Wow. It's just a monster of a cast, directed by Lee Daniels. Now, how does it feel going into a project with a cast such as that and you are playing uh, Martin Luther King Jr.? Dude, I feel like a little boy with short legs chasing his father. I mean, my God, it's 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 like I I I I should not be here, and you know you're constantly second guessing yourself because you're working with people who are so dynamic at what they do, 
<laughs> you know, and you've not quite been around that long to make a a name for yourself. So it's of it, from what I understand. Okay, well, yeah, learn something new every day. Have you been wa- watching the Olympics at all? I, I have, I have, and I have a pet peeve to talk about about the Olympics. I, so do I. Uh, you first. Okay, I. I, I have hardly watched – I have watched maybe four minutes of the entire Olympic coverage. Now, part of that was mm-hmm. – uh, and I, I've been thinking about writing a seriously uh, – a strongly worded blog post. What? On our website an actual it. blog post. An actual blog post, which I never, ever do on our site, which do is it. the worst show on the web.com. We uh, – during the opening ceremonies – now, did you watch the opening ceremonies? I did not. Okay. There was a, a, a piece that they did where they said, and now, ladies and gentlemen, the London Symphony Orchestra mm-hmm. will be playing uh, the theme Chariots of Fire. Oh, okay. Vangelis. Yeah. And, One uh, of my favorite composers and, of all time. And so they'll be playing the theme from Chariots of Fire. Mm-hmm. And so they start, and the first thing that you see is a finger, because that, that, that piece of music starts with, yeah, and then right. the rest of it comes in. And then, more of a... Then the, 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 the right. camera p- pulls back to yeah. reveal that that person is Rowan Atkinson. Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. Mm-hmm. And they do a whole shtick that was a little bit long in the tooth, and he's... Breaking uh, the piano, his, his falling entire over, job getting his head is, His stuck. entire job is doing that through the entire song, and he gets bored, and then at one point he sneezes, he's looking for nap uh, tissue, uh-huh. and then at one point he's daydreaming that in there they inter- cl- intercut him with clips of... The, the real the movie, and it was just a little long in the tooth, like this explanation. And yeah. so, but, but here was my my fault with it. I think I'm going to go first. No, no, here was my fault with it. Immediately, right? They, they say, and here's the London Symphony Orchestra right. playing this piece of music, mm-hmm. and almost immediately it becomes a Mr. Bean gag. Right. It's like, wow, what a way to reduce world class musicians to props. Oh, I thought they'd been props for a while. You know, I actually ever since they played with Elton John, you know, I've kind of thought of them as, as no, I, you know, I, I just found it really an sort accessory. Of, sort of, yeah, that's all it was. Yeah. It, and it's like, okay, why don't you let people play? That's your pet peeve. Well, yeah, why don't you let? Because oh, I haven't either. been watching. They, they're. I'm so done with the Olympics already. But why don't you? You know, if you're going to do that, fine. Here's the London Symphony Orchestra playing mm-hmm. a great piece of music, mm-hmm. and let us appreciate that for a few minutes. Let us appreciate, you know, a minute of the actual music, the, the, the beautiful music, and then... So you're criticizing their timing. Just 